Hi, Vincent Hall Photographers, and welcome to another edition of Photography Class. I hope you're all having a good week. Anyway, this week we're going to be trying something called Fill the Frame, which is completely opposite from what we've been doing with our rule of thirds. So whereas we talked about positive and negative space and using the rule of thirds or the reverse rule of thirds to create an eye-pleasing composition, Today we're gonna to break those rules because what's an art rule if you can't break it sometimes? And we're going to be talking about filling the frame or really having no rest and forcing the viewer to see something really close up. Anyway, stay tuned, it should be a lot of fun. Filling the frame isn't the same as close-up photography. We've already done that where we've done the macro and the pano where we were going in really close to something. You can do that, but it's more the idea of capturing it some object that actually fills the entire frame of the picture. So there would be my picture and I would take that and see what I get. It's almost abstracting, abstracting excuse me, and it's also going to give you a very shallow depth of field. Everything kind of stays in the same area. Of course, anywhere you can go outside where there's ground cover, that's a pretty easy all things filling the frame. I like how these little red wild strawberries create a variation on the pattern from all the green leaves. Sometimes things you should have gotten rid of, like this pile of leaves in the back corner of my yard, but then one green leaf inside of it is another example of filling the frame with objects. The stems and the leaves can create some really cool patterns. Filling the frame doesn't have to be about vegetation necessarily. Here's some glass jars that I have on the back porch with some lights inside. I can move this around until I get just the right angle that I might want to have for a photo. I don't think that one, maybe right about here where it's also showing some stuff behind it, but I wanna fill the frame. So I'm gonna move in until I get everything that's all one part of this image involved. So building on other projects, reflection, and lighting are another way to make your fill the frame photo more interesting. Something as simple as my iced coffee can actually make a cool fill the frame photo. Yes, it's going to be abstract, but it's also going to give us some amazing variations of hues and textures and I would probably come right in so that I'm filling my frame in my camera with the subject and there's my picture can just as easily be a photo of an object that you have, but you're taking just a piece of it. This is a tile that I purchased in Istanbul on a trip a ways back. And I always love the way the patterns and the line work, but rather than take the whole image, because there it is, I'm just going to move in and fill my frame and part, find a part of it that works the best for me. Right here, I like all these shapes, but again, I am filling my entire frame no negative space here. Believe it or not, even old book displays could become a cool photo. And it also tells a story. If I back up, you'll see I have a book display that has a ton of books. I also sponsored a yearbook for 35 years. So I have one from each year that I sponsored. They go way down. But if I wanted to try to find any one of these, I'll come back up to this one as eye level. I might just take a picture here. Again, it's telling you everything. Find whichever one I want, maybe right about there. So we're staying in the picture. The colors make it interesting. And I've got a really cool full frame photo. I wanted to show you not everything has to be a close up of one object. This is the side of a hanging basket with some rich green foliage next to it. Notice there's really no visual rest. I can move around, try to find some other areas that might be interesting for my shot. So I can position the white flowers against the green but this is still full frame photography, no negative space. If you find yourself stymied by this project and say, I don't know, I feel like I'm up against a brick wall. Well, then just photograph it because that can also be a great example of full frame photography, give you some interesting lines and some abstract texture as well. I get asked, what about people? What about animals? If I take one more picture of a plant, I'm going to lose my mind. And I understand that because I never got into photography to become a plant photographer. However, in this time of being in restrictive movement, I have to work with what I have around my house so that I can simulate what you have around your area of living as well. That said, there are people around where you live. 
They might be someone you live with, a next door neighbor, someone who works in the facility, or maybe you're just capturing someone walking by for a walk. You can do full frame photography of portraits, and I'm going to show you some examples that follow. In addition, machinery is really cool for full frame. So if you're going by and there's a generator running outside or you might find a car, preferably even with the hood popped up, getting some interesting shots of the inside of car mechanics is fun too. I have some old car pictures that are going to follow from an antique car show, close-ups that are full frame. And again, all of these lessons in photography follow with the other ones we've done. So if you liked reflection, you might try to do full frame that involves reflection or full frame that involves low light or one of the other objects that we've discussed and topics rather <laughs> throughout all of the other lessons. Of course, sometimes you just can't get outside to take the pictures or you might have a lot of existing photos that you could use with cropping in Photoshop to create that full frame image where it didn't exist originally. So I'm going to show you on my laptop some examples of photos I took that are not full frame to start out, but by selective cropping, we can make them work. The key is, it's not as easy as you think. It's not just, oh, well, I'll just crop in and get everything, because you don't wanna lose the information that tells the viewer what your photo is about. So it's a little tricky, but it's doable, and let's get started. A lot of you have pets. And pets, unfortunately, don't always cooperate with us. But if you can catch your pet, so to speak, in repose or looking at something intently, you might be able to do a close crop. Here I have a picture of Peanut and Lenny, my two dachshunds in residence. And as you can see, they like to lay on top of each other. But I've got some background, which is negative space, which also is not part of what a full frame photo is. They are also a subject that I think I'm going to rotate a bit. And as you can see, as I'm rotating, I'm getting rid of all the noise in the background, but now they're more full frame, albeit not quite. So I'm gonna move this in, move this up, and I still get a nice full frame photo of the dogs. Yes, there's material, but that's subject matter. So, you know, we could even come in a little closer if we wanted to. Oops, gotta grab the right thing here. There we go. And we're still getting an essence of dog without having all the extra background. So this would work as full frame. Next, we're going to look at some other subjects on the computer, including portraiture and some still life and even food photography. Here is a photo I took of a young lady for her senior portrait shoot, and she wanted a bit of her guitar, and it's nicely framed, but with the right kind of photo, you can do a full frame picture in Photoshop. I'm going, yes, I'm getting rid of the guitar and all of those things. And it's always a challenge to try to come up with an area of the face that will still give us the full frame and the person can still be seen as the person. This is also called close cropping. And I'll just come in a little bit more here. Sometimes you can even come down into this area here, but I think I'll leave a little more of her hair and crop in. So if I zoom in, I still have a little piece right here. So you have to sometimes just double check yourself. There we are. And as you can see here, I have done full frame photography with a portrait and I've cropped it. So you can go find some existing work and try to crop it. Now, here's the key. You don't want to lose the whole person's area of um, personality, so to speak. You still want to be able to see both eyes and you need to be able to see enough of the face to make it work. So angle is key to this. So I will save that later in the essence of time. What about a still life? This was from a Memorial Day parade a few years back, actually last year when they were doing the... Um, Rolling Thunder for the last time. I can still get the essence of this photo with the American flag and the POW flag without having to have all of the background because sometimes it's just a matter of rotating the picture and then making it work this way. So when I crop it, I have a full frame image, 
but I don't have all that extraneous place. Now this, I probably would still come in a little more on this side, just so it's, you know, gives it a little more interest. And even though the American flag is showing here, that's okay. This is still full frame of the flags without it being the way the original picture was with all the background. Here's another picture that's already full frame. You could make it more. I could come into just her face and a little bit of her hair, and it's still a working picture. This was um, her hat, and the hat's part of what she's wearing, so that does count as full frame. So it doesn't just have to be skin tone, it just has to be all object. This is um, from an event that I shot a few years back in a ballroom, and I always thought this crystal globe was interesting. By itself, there's still a lot of color, so maybe we could consider it full frame, but this is all out of focus, so the out of focus does become the negative space. So this is where you get into the almost abstraction, kind of a mini version of a macro zoom thing, where what do you do when something is a circle and you want it to work? Well, you go to a square, just come in here a little bit. This becomes more of a texture shot, but it can be pretty interesting. And there's some other effects in Photoshop later on when we're doing just a Photoshop lesson that I'll show you, but you can do texture and make it full frame as well. Food photography is a lot of fun. And this was a dessert tray from another event that I was shooting. And I liked this negative space with the flower, but I can come in and just get the essence of these dessert items without having to, and maybe leave a little bit of the flower because that's full frame. I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit. And I think I'm gonna have to get rid of that flower. So we'll just get the important part, the chocolate, because <laughs> that's always important, and do something like this. Maybe bring this in just a little bit. So now we have a full frame photo of food items. There's repetition in the pattern of these little chocolate bites in the background and the little cream puffs in the front are still subject. So that still makes it full frame. You might have existing food pictures you can use or heck, take a picture of breakfast, lunch, or dinner, at least one of the items and see what you can do with it. Um, this picture here was also already full frame. This was for um, website photography for an artistic group that wanted something. And yes, her hand and all this is in here, but she's wearing black. So this black does become negative space. So even though I have an already full frame photo, I can show you how to take it here. We're just going to try to move this around a little bit. So there's going to be less of the black a little more of her face. And again, by tilting this back in and moving it over and around up here. And then I'm gonna come across here just a little bit to get the essence of this person's face. I can do this and then I could just lighten these areas here, but for the most part, she's still full frame. This is extreme and nobody really wants their face to look like this, but you know, you've probably seen pictures like that. It does fill the frame. It also is not that flattering. So in some cases you have to know when not to do it unless you decide that the eye is the important part of your picture and you're just gonna photograph that. Now this starts to look like an eye chart type thing, but you can do a zoom of an eye and I'll show you one at the end that does look like that. We can go to, um, back to this face again where we did the full frame and just talk about maybe bringing things up just a little bit more. So now that I'm back to this, I like this better. The hair leads your eye around, but it still works. So these are just some examples of how you can take existing photos that you have and zoom back in to create a more close up version of the photo. So here we are full frame, no not full frame, excuse me, non full frame, full image, which was a lot of everything. And after some selective cropping, we still have an eye pleasing picture, but it takes up the entire frame. Try this experiment with existing photos if you don't feel like taking pictures again. Like I said, the idea of all of our photo lessons are to make them your own, just like the drawing and painting lessons are. These are to give you inspiration 
and see where you personally can go with this. It's a springboard, if you will, to some new ideas. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's photo lesson. I'm sure you can find some images that will be fun. I look forward to seeing what everyone's working on in the next week. And until I see you again via our YouTube meetings like this, stay well, enjoy, and keep creating, Vincent Hall. I'll see you soon.